with the refreshments, which is a year ago? year and a half ago. year and a half ago. And uh, we'd like to thank the Laguna Mata Museum Foundation for um, every time we have this program, they supply us with the refreshments, which is an added treat for us. And also, they record uh, the program for our archives. And uh, today, we're having Manuel Hinojosa, who's our architect. He's a supporter of the museum. He helps with everything we do here. Uh, he's a wonderful asset, as well as a friend of, of the museum and the, and the friends of the museums here. Um, for the record, uh, it's 7, I'll say 7.15. It's uh, Thursday, June 27th, and we'll begin the program. Bye -bye. Thank you. Thank you, Ed. It's always a pleasure to, uh, to come before you and, and, and present to you. Thing. I think this one probably everybody's seen it a couple of times anyway, so, so don't fall asleep, Mr. Myers, when you see this. But, but uh, architecture is one of the subjects that I'm really interested in, and I've been investigating the architecture of the valley for many years now. Uh, it, it, it's something that that's, that's fun for me as well as work. Uh, currently, I'm working on the uh, the Roma project. I don't know if you're familiar with the downtown Roma, and uh, we're doing a whole block. It's a nice tea grant, same kind of grant that we have in in the um, uh, the Champion Building, same kind of money, two and a half million, and we're restoring about four buildings there. At reconstructing and doing it, it, it's a very scientific way of studying the architecture and uh, you know I, I really enjoy it more because my family and I know a lot of families you know are from that area where you know the roots and, 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 and we have to understand sometimes you know where we come from and where we, you know where our family has been in order to understand ourselves uh, so so uh, it, it's a subject that you know when you talk about architecture in the Rio Grande Valley or architecture along the Rio Grande River, you're, you're talking about architecture is very unique. It's not Mexican architecture. It's, it's, it's really Rio Grande Valley architecture. And, and then let me explain that a little bit. The, uh, the uh, Mexico's, you know, of course, when it was first colonized, it was Cortes, and it's been around for 500 years. It has a long history. And in that process, what you have is you have colonizations taking place, and you have a migration north. Uh, uh, what you, the architecture you have here has always been one that started with that migration, and it ended up in the river. Like, and, and so what, 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 what you had is you had families that are already established. As a matter of fact, some of those families were in 50 miles away for 200 years, and never really moved up to the river. And, and so what this is all about, this is all about entries. You enter, in, and you enter, you take a road, and you get to a destination. What you do, with, what you bring with that are influences. You know, much much of the architecture that came into Mexico City, made its way back up, and ended up here, had, had an entry. And as years went by, we had other entries. Entries from, you heard from New Orleans, you're going to see this in, this, in, in, in some of the work, and I'll talk about that as we go along. A lot of influences, whether French, the German, uh, and uh, and uh, you just even in, uh, cultural influences that were here already. So this is when we're talking about architecture. It's architecture you don't see any place else in the world, and that's already been identified. Uh, not too uh, this last year, the National Historic Trust Fund was here, and they labeled this area as one of the 11 most dangerous, you know, architectural areas in the United States. Meaning that you better take care of your buildings because. They need they need work and you want to preserve it because it's very unique and uh, they it's very significant. And I'll go ahead and start off with that idea. The uh, the architecture again started pretty much along like I mentioned along the river and we had a lot of the, the colonization that took place was really with the families. You know you hear about the Trevinos, the Cantus, the the Barreras, the uh, the Cavazos, many of the families were already here and they were ranching and one of the first structures that was always built was a, some kind of little fortification and they used using, using the, the uh, natural stones in the area like this one right here which is which I found really in, in, in right on the Alamo River which was which was one of the rivers that that allowed for the colonization well when you're in a, when you're in this area that's really that's not really uh, secured or you have Indians you have a way to defend yourself and they were really used as you can see there's a porthole of that building and uh, that was one of the lifestyles you don't necessarily build a building 
to live in and have the commodity, you build a building to protect yourself from, in this case, the Indians. And that's one of the reasons why it was so slow. It, it took them 200 years just to get to the river because they were very hostile and the Indians in, in that area. Later on, uh, the buildings you know, started to become a little bit more formal. Uh, this building right now is in, is in Guerrero, or what used to be called Revilla, one of the first colonies of, of towns in the colony that was established by Escandon. Notice that the walls are very tall, and they're tall from several purposes. One reason is because uh, to defend yourself from the Indians. If you had an Indian on a horseback, it was hard for him to scale the walls. Also, they were very cool. And as a matter of fact, back then, they really invented a material, what they call a, a chichipichi, which is a concrete. And even though concrete was really was really uh, uh, invented back in the early uh, 19th century, they were already using this material very early in Mexico, and it did not leak. As a matter of fact, you try to do it now; it's very hard to do because it just takes a person that really has a, uh, the knowledge of how to do that. Uh, this again, this is this is Revilla. Uh, well, this is Guerrero. It, am I in focus? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Okay. And uh, maybe because a little bit to the side. This is, and if you visited Guerrero, you, you're going to see a lot of the buildings. Of course, this building was submerged in the 1950s, and what you're really seeing is all the skin uh, off the buildings and showing it all the uh, the different materials that were used. But in the beginning, and I'm talking about the 1750s, and that's uh, most of the construction was was done out of the stone, the laja stone that was really on the banks of the, of the local rivers, in this case, the banks of the Salado River, which connected to the Rio Grande. And, and you can see the church there that, that has been restored since I took this picture. And uh, it, it had been underwater, and now you can, it has a roof. And uh, you can see where there is an effort to come back and preserve it on the Mexican side. The, uh, in, in a lot of the communities, you had market areas. In this, in the, in this uh, uh, location, you had, you had the, the structure where they had the markings, and they called parianza. They still refer to, to buildings like this in the market area as parianza. Moving along to one of the other co colonial towns is, is, uh, is Mier. Believe it or not, this is a very significant structure in northern Mexico. As a matter of fact, it's just significant any of the buildings in Monterey. Uh, they're, they're that old. This, bu this building, of course, is recorded in the 1790s, but it might even be a little bit earlier. The tower was really done in the 1880s and it's done out of brick. So, so you can imagine this structure right here uh, could, was built and could hold a tower with that much weight on it after the foundation was done, designed for something else. One of the things that I really found interesting about this construction was that in the beginning in Mier, you know, they, they, they all were given land grants and they said, okay, now you need to, you know, one of the deals here, if you're going to get a grant, you've got you to build in town. And the ranchers did not, they just said, you know what, I got my freedom on my ranch, why don't I want to go downtown? I said, well, if you don't, we're going to penalize you. And they forced all the residents to, to move around the town. And they really hesitated. Matter of fact, it took them about 30 or 40 years. And, uh, and so they really didn't care about the, bu the buildings or buildings. As a matter of fact, they really they had very little to do with these buildings. And you could find most of the Indians in that area were involved. Usually what happens is that, the, in this case, one of the colleges of, of priests brought in uh, a master builder, an architect, who had drawings and said, okay, get started on it, and he left. And a lot of times what happened is that your indigenous help came in and finished the building. And you, you can see by some of the documentation, it was, was really interesting because you had, some of it was written in a language called uh, Nahuatl. And Nahuatl is a very old uh, codex type of, of, of uh, language that was, in this case, uh, really carried through by the Tlaxcaltecas, which were outside of Mexico City. And they were the populators of most of the northern, they were, they were the main populators of northern Mexico and uh, eventually get their, their dawn or their, their uh, uh, Hidalgo designation. And so, so they had a lot, to do, a lot more to do with the architecture than a lot of your early ranchers. And you can see some of the detailing, especially the, right in the middle, you can see the, two, the bird with the two heads, which is, uh, it, you can see that that was something that was taken from, from the, uh, the, uh, uh, the German seal or what I want to say, the Habsburg family. And some of the flowers that were really, not, uh, again, not waddled. So that, that, a lot of the decorations were more of Indian nature. This building, it's, it's, it amazes me too because you can see, well, I'm talking about the master builder. He gives them a set of plans and he leaves. Well, on the right side, I, I think they try to do columns, but they look like pipes. You know, because they're so thin. <laughs> you know? 
and, and then you had uh, either the order is not together, the lines, the, the different uh, detail that goes around the, the, the doors and the windows are, are, are very different. And the cornice on top is one of a kind. I've never seen anything like that. This was, this was actually where, the, where when that, in that time the mayor used to live and they built it for him. Probably about the same time of the church. Down, moving down the river in Camargo, and, and this is, this is Via Nueva, which is adjacent to Camargo. Camargo was, was a mud type of, it was built out of adobe, where you saw Mier and, and Revilla mostly done out of, out of the stone. And it flooded, and what happened when it flooded? The adobe dissolved. And, and so the people got so tired of this flooding, they moved up the hill, and they started building the buildings out of stone. And uh, you can see a lot of the detailing that was done here. This is, this is not focus. A lot of the detail in here was uh, it's probably because of the uh, is um, that's good. It is is it is still in stone, and uh, and it, it continued that way uh, when you start when uh, when brick was introduced into the area. One of the things that happens in in, in Matamoros and the other one of the other towns that came out after the colonies and it was settled in 1784. It was settled by 15 families from this Camargo, Reynosa area. They moved to Matamora, they set up a little town, they called it San Juan de los Hermosos, Hermosos, which means, you know, the, 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 San, the Saint John of the beautiful title, the, uh, the title uh, uh, areas. And uh, th from then they, they established, became Refugio, and then became Matamoros. And one of the things that, that uh, Abatnas in 1826 noticed when he went into all the towns that were made out of stone and he got to, to Matamoros, that the buildings were already made out of brick. So they had already had the influence of, of and the design of brick into the buildings. This is one of the churches, the, the, uh, the, the cathedral, uh, Concepcion de Refugio, in Matamoros. And the reason I'm showing this lithograph, because it's a mid-19th century lithograph, and you can see the towers. One is, is round, and one has a little bit of a, of a, uh, of a double dome type of effect. And, and it continues. You can see the towers again uh, with, with that one, one shorter than the other, and, uh, but the same facade there. And look at the size of this building on the side, which is, which is very it dominated that, that landscaping. Uh, you can see this during the revolution of 19. In the, in the early 1900s, how that building still existed, and today it is gone. And the towers have changed probably because of hurricanes, the big hurricane in 1867, that they reconstructed that. One of the things that we've encountered there, that, there is, that they attribute the design to an architect by the name of Passament. And uh, Bartolo, Bartolo Passament did a lot of the architecture there it, it, in France, but from New Orleans. And he came in in the 1820s. It turns out that he's an African American. That, that he was, a, he was a, uh, families were, were given freedom very early and, and, uh, and refuged in Matamoros. And in that process, he, he brought in some of the examples from New Orleans. In the case, uh, they attribute a lot of the design of the towers, not of the building, to St. Uh, uh, St. Louis's in, uh, Cathedral in New Orleans. The downtown area, you can see how, how the, the streets were very minimum in, in, in width. And, and this one right here is, is the Eturia building uh, back during the hey, the cotton boom area where you had everybody going to Matamoros to avoid the uh, union and, and uh, made a lot of money because of the cotton trade. Uh, since then, you, it, what the example here is that you have this Pettis building and how commercialization in, in this last century has taken over in, in the first floor. It, it, uh, it, it really uh, takes a lot away from the, the history of the architecture. But, Again, you can see the brickwork being done that was that was really brought into the uh, uh, the Brownsville area, uh, influenced the Brownsville area. This this beautiful piece of Art Nouveau that's that's in the the, the Matamoros uh, townscape, uh, which I really really uh, uh, like to go look at. And of course, your fortifications that uh, your, your Casa Mata, which was built in the 1840s and served as as uh, as a form of, of architecture. It, it, in that area. Crossing the river and uh, coming to Port Isabel, there was, there was a, the first, the first attempt here, and this was, this was the cottage that was built in, in the 1850, late 1850s. You could see that it was an eastern type of architecture, wooden architecture, that was brought in to the, uh, into the area. 
uh, it served a purpose, uh, and the only way this worked because the materials really need to be of, of you know, termite resistant rotting, and, and, and of course they had to import a lot of the lumber. And, and you can see how the same, the style of that, where you had a really, a, a, what they call a dog run in between. You bring your, your carriage in the middle, and the kitchen was always separated from the building because that was the first thing that was going to burn. The kitchen was going to catch fire, and it wouldn't take down the whole house. A lot of your brown houses are like that right now. Uh, one of the one that I was at Carlos Casco's house, and his, he, he restored a house, and he tore down the walls, and he found the, the, uh, the kitchen in the back and I told them this was the kitchen and it was separate from the house and the materials there were you know I mean unbelievable the materials there uh, they, the Hanson house had lasted so long simply because of the cedar of the uh, of this of the yeah the cedar material and and the, the type of construction it had when I don't know if you remember when we took off the top part of the uh, of the lighthouse uh, we got on top because uh, the, the history says that, that they blew up the lighthouse, and nobody really knew how they blew it up or what happened, only that there were some cracks. Well, and also the history, you look, the marker over there says that the, the brick of the lighthouse was red brick. Okay. Well, it turns out that the brick of the lighthouse only is red on the top portion. And this was constructed again after the Civil War, the next year of the Civil War. Well, it was constructed because the soldiers have etched their names all around that, that path. And, and the brick was New Orleans brick, it was a hard fire brick on the top part, imported, brought in by the steamers, probably as, as, your, as your weight for the boats, and used to finish up the work because the brick below that is locally made brick. And it was built in, in the early 1850s uh, on site, just like a lot of the buildings were built that early. Uh, this example of, of the uh, Phil Trevino House, or what's the Stillman Museum, shows how there was a resistance to, to use some of, or, or more of a hybrid of, of, of an architecture taking place because you had that very classical front look with an antebellum like that and you still had the brick and, and, uh, and you, had, you started to see more of your pitch roofs than, than you did your, um, your flat roofs that existed in, in, the, in the houses down the river. And then you still, you still make, this is the Hanson house I was talking about earlier, uh, as a matter of fact, I asked Gascos, can I dig up your, your privy or your outhouse in the back? And I dug about eight feet down and, and, and really uncovered a lot of the history of the building. Uh, it was, it was uh, just an amazing uh, collection of, 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 you know, just the lifestyle for that area. The, uh, one of the buildings, of course, you recognize this as, as the uh, city hall or the bus station in downtown Brownsville. Uh, this one has taken many shapes. The only thing that's original about this building is the foundation. <laughs> <laughs> it was an 1850 building, one of the first buildings built on Stillman land. Uh, it got hit by hurricanes. It was, had a second floor. It got a first floor. They had a second floor. It knocked it off. And, and to the point where you don't even recognize what, it, what the way it, it was. But still, it, it still remains as a community space in, in the area. Uh, this building was an 1867 building. It was built by uh, 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 the architect was named uh, Samuel, Brown, uh, Sam, Samuel Brown, and Samuel Brown introduced, still brought in the arches into the area, and, and still and they use a lot of the fired brick. Keep in mind, right now it's it's you see the brick and you like the brick, but the brick was never intended to be exposed. It was always intended to be protected. It probably was it had a white in, in, in uh, the old picture show it with a real white type of coat to protect that soft brick that was fired in the area. Uh, brick was made on site. It was made in a kiln, and you can tell you can't do with the brick anymore like that because uh, you can see the brick is red and yellow, and the the, the yellow brick is what's closer to the fire, and the red brick is what's away from the fire, and that's why you have a little uh, effects on there, and uh, it really it really uh, creates a nice nice. Uh, look that we can't achieve right now. Uh, this building, the Alonso building, again it shows the merchants, uh, the commerce was getting, was in the late 19th century, was really developing in the area. Uh, you, you put a store downstairs, you lived upstairs. A lot of this was really being influenced by the New Orleans uh, Fed. Keep in mind that New Orleans, when they talk about French Quarter is Spanish. French was established, I mean was founded in 1718 on a swamp. 
You know, it wasn't until 18, uh, 1762 when uh, Louis the Fourteenth, uh, Fifteenth, gave Charles the Th Charles the Third uh, New Orleans as a gift, and all the buildings that were there at that time were frame buildings with pitch roofs and open courtyards. Well, that created problems because they're built up to the you know, they were they were they were, they were put, built in a way where it was easy to catch fire, and eventually the whole town burned down. In, in uh, 1788, 800 buildings burned down. Yes. Seven, then 250 burned down in 1790. So the rest of the town went. The rest of what was French influence was gone. The reconstruction took place, and then it became all Spanish colonial type of architecture. And so, so therefore, a lot of that influence, I mean, because of a lot of trade in New Orleans, was brought back here and was built. And you see a, you see a lot of the architecture uh, uh, coming coming back again, especially the, the, the railing. Back then it was it was a uh, it was a, a wrought iron, it became more of a cast iron type of a, a use uh, back in the 1820s. And this uh, this building, which is uh, Cueto building or your Nueva Libertad, is uh, another example. You can see the, the warehouse scale at the bottom portion and, and it's still the living spaces on top. And, uh, uh, the but the Phil Pacheco building, which I, I, it looks like a steamboat to me. It I does. Really, uh, I, I really like that that, it's that effect. It's a beautiful yeah. building. Uh, it's still, as a matter of fact, I I was noticing that a lot of the bricks that were used that have the same brand that we have here at the uh, uh, the uh, the Champion building. So I don't know if they use yeah. the the. Keep it, well, back then, every one of the mason. Masonry was big. I mean, everybody could, could uh, there was good masons. Everybody, you couldn't make, get better masons than, than on the river. And there was kilns on all the ranches all through the, through the river. And uh, so, so brick was something that was going to work for the area. And a lot of good examples came out of it. If, if you go if, uh, in Fort Brown at the Gorgas Hall building, when I showed you a little while ago, at the end, you have a very similar building. Why do you have a very similar shape? This, you know, the, the skewed, the hexag hexagonal type of shape, because the same architect. Mm -hmm. You know, Samuel Brown also did this building at the Wagner Brown uh, uh, site, and it's a beautiful building. You can see the treatment, the cornices. I think it, it brings out some of the earlier stonework that we saw in, in the mid area. So there's a lot of a little taken from here, this fluence taken mm -hmm. from another one, and what you do, you created something that nobody else had. Uh, same thing with uh, the Celaya House. The Celaya House it was designed by Celaya himself, Augustine Celaya. And uh, in case it's focusing. As a matter of fact, this is my brother's house. And uh, so he's already, he's re yeah, he's re he went back and, and helped me restore the house. He's done a real nice job to it. And he really enjoys it. Uh, uh, you know what I think? We're building a swimming pool in the back and we hit. I mean, a uh, trash pit that was all Civil War, you know. Oh, so, 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 my gosh, so, 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 so the exciting. whole area right Wouldn't here was, amazing. this area right here oh, was, was, uh, was set up with his troops. I mean, oh, there was troops stationed wow. here. As a matter of fact, one of the guys next door brings me a button, and I suppose I recognize the button since the U.S.-Mexican War. His dog had pulled out of the trunk of that plant area. So you can see that it, the, the camps were layered oh, over. Back then, the, it was hilly, oh, and they, they leveled everything, so you get an idea. This was a this was a turn of the century building though, and uh, as well as your Tijerina building, which I like because it has that those buttresses on the corner, mm -hmm. and, and it's very different. It, it still it, you know brings in you know a hip roof and a very you know formal entry, but at the same time it has uh, a a old type of uh, of detailing on the building. Move along down the other side of the river because at the same time that Brown was, was being formed. Mm -hmm you had Roma being established. And, and this is one of the buildings that ex it exemplifies the materials being used. Bottom portion of the building, big blocks called Ciar, which is, which is a limestone that was quarried out of the Cerralbo Monterrey area, was brought in, used as building materials. And then the Laja stone, the second layer, and you can see that in the small little slats, and that was, uh, and it was, it was you know, small pieces, big pieces, what they call a regionada, and then the top part was brick. So you had three materials used in plaster, and you couldn't tell anyway. But now, since that time has passed by, it gives a real nice textured effect. Are those little air vents, or what are those? Yeah, those are those. Oh. Are, there's an attic little area. Of course, keep in mind, it's been it's been modified time and time again, and uh, and that's what we're trying to do right now. We're going to try to put these back in the state that they were uh, in, in that period. Mm -hmm. uh, this shows an example of some of the New Orleans. This probably shipped in from New Orleans, put in. This is a Noah Cox building. 
it was, it was uh, back in 1852 in that Roma area, but you can see some of the architecture along the river, Matamoros, Brownsville, and even Roma. I, I, I collect very many of the bricks in the area. A lot of these bricks I find and I keep. So I have hundreds of frogs on bricks to show the different types of, of effects. Some of these are brown, or some of these are Port, uh, Port Isabel bricks. Some of these are Brownsville bricks. Some of these are Roma bricks. Some of these are, but but you can see that every mason had, uh, or every kiln would would uh, mark their brick. And one of the big, uh, well, let's say architects or inventors was Port Scheller. And Enrique Portscheller was, was a German immigrant. He came in, matter of fact, he was a Prussian deserter that joined the, the, uh, the Maximilian army, fought on the, uh, the Contra guerrilla band, and then turned and went with the, uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the side against Maximilian. And then he, let, he and his friend left. They moved through Rio Grande City. And Rio Grande City probably was involved in the construction of the of the Fort Ringwald. Learn how to learn to trade. Uh, after he he learned to trade, married a woman from Mir, and they went on to uh, uh, start doing a lot of the construction. And one of his uh, you know earlier work, some of his port shuttle work, was very classical. He did a lot of molded brick, which was really new to the area. He had a lot of designs, very similar designs, in stone carved, but he would do the the, the brick. On, uh, the kiln on site. He used cactus juice to treat the the, mm. the brick right. Yeah. And uh, uh, Port Scheller uh, established, uh, made a lot of the building, including this Guerra building in, in Roma. Uh, yeah. Again, you can see how the brick was had a a, uh, a whitewash or, or a, a a coating to protect it. Samples in this building in the, in this Roma court area uh, were were tested. These are the colors that we found. You know, the, from the uh, from the testing. So this was the colors that they use 100. Mm -hmm. 100 you know, and this is one that you restored, or no, no, this has been restored by Texas Parks and Wildlife. Yeah. We're right across the street. We're doing the Ramirez Hospital, the Ramirez Building, the Science, the Coffee Port. Oh, yeah. So, so yeah, we're doing the hot, which is the oldest structure, yes. you know, there. This in Rio Grande City. There's another structure there. It's Port Scheller. Uh, it's got a Port Scheller label. And of course, the, de la, ah, the this uh, Silverio. <laughs> De la, de la Peña post office, and you can see the work, the, 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 the uh, it's, a, it's an ionic column, and, and how that, it's already dissolving because the material is very soft. Uh -huh. They have restored that since then, so it's not as bad as it looks here. Uh, and also the railings. This building across the street, I took this picture 20, 25 years ago, I guess. Mm. And, uh, but it shows another Port Scheller piece of, of work, which was, you know, still a little bit, but you could see the design today. It's a little restaurant, and they've stuck with that fish, and it's something they shouldn't do. But Rio Grande still has to to uh, do some more things to it, like this Davis building. This was a this was the Davis steamboat landing, and someone took it and made it into a house. It's like a chalet. It. And, and, uh, and, and really, uh, if not ruin the build, the architecture of the building, you know, probably ruin some of the materials when one day when they want to restore it again. Another example of Port Schiller work in Rio Grande. And, and then you had the Laborde House, which is a later type of building, but you can still see the brick influence in that area. Uh, San Antonio architect designed this, by the way. Uh, it, the architecture still maintained that kind of look. This is Hidalgo, and this is the post office building in Hidalgo. And you can see the dental the dental work on the top and the, the, the still the flat roof because they were still trying to incorporate that the type of, uh, of uh, techniques that were used in the past. Uh, and the jail right uh, uh, right next door. Mm -hmm. Of course, this was Hidalgo, which later became Edinburgh. And one day, packed overnight in 1909, took off, went down the high road, went to Edinburgh. There was, a, there was nothing in Edinburgh. And the first thing they built were the vaults. Then they built the jail, and they built the courthouse. <laughs> and the jail right now happens to, to house the, uh, the, uh, uh, the museum. And, and, uh, and so the others are additions, but you, you see that, that jail part. Uh, you had the missionaries, or the oblates, came into the area right after the Mexican War in 1849. As a matter of fact, they came to Portisville. They, they took on the missionary work down the Rio Grande River. And uh, they they spent a lot of time uh, at the time of, of the uh, Treaty of Guadalupe with Mexico was uh, with the, the Rio Grande established the Mexican border. Of course, there was no 
uh, nobody to perform religious services on the United States side, and they in turn came in to fill in that void. Uh, one of the first buildings to build the Immaculate Conception in Brownsville, uh, which was the work of, of the architect uh, uh, Jean-Pierre Carolyn. And uh, this was an 1859 building. He had built one in Roma. He built the first one was in 1854. And uh, Verde, the mason, which was very was was uh, was was responsible for doing the brickwork. I don't know if you remember, but he he left to go get some wood material to finish the building, and his boat sank, and he died. Mm. Uh, of course, you can see some of the detail, and what's really nice, the little pinnacles that had the little roof on it, mm -hmm. and how they're on all the buildings, including oh, some wow. of the newer oh, Madrilenia yeah. work uh, that was done by McCoy back in 1892. And uh, it, this, is, this is, by the way, this is, this is Ed Saganowitz building, if you know which one I'm talking about there in Brownsville. And it's a very nice formal architecture that, that was uh, in the Brownsville area. But you can still see the little pinnacles in all the corners of, of the building. And, and it's, it's really a French Gothic style of architecture. The, the, uh, and keep in mind, it used to have a steeple that was blown away in 1933 during the hurricane. Uh, as a matter of fact, it has a steeple like this. This is the Toluca Ranch Chapel, and you have to go look at the villa inside. It's got velvet ceilings, mm -hmm. you know, Man, you know just really beautiful cool. ceilings that, that, that the family oh. takes care of it, and, it, and it's... Uh, well, it, where it's, is that, right? That's in Toluca Ranch. Ranch. It's right next oh, to Progreso. Yeah. If you go to Progreso Bridge, Right on the left-hand side, there's a road. Just take a little road, and you can see it from the road. From the, mm. from the road from the and it has some buildings there, but but this was a family building. Matter of fact, he, it was a promise. You know, if if I get rain, you know, uh. I'll build a church. And it was the same floor plan as uh, Lady Visitation. There is it tiny? I mean, is it just it's the same size as the one? The same identical plan as the other one oh. uh, on the military highway. Mm. And this one also, you can see the little details. This is La Grulla, by the way. This is way out there. This is, but you can see they still bring out some it's of the little you know, uh, detailing. Uh, and this was probably done later on. And you can see it in Hidalgo, too. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. This, this is a Lomita Bay. It's not that old building. That's a Lomita? Yeah. yeah. That's about 1890. And, and uh, actually, there was a building before that. But there was a building identical like that, like Carmen outside of Brownsville. And that's been destroyed, but almost almost identical. Of course, right, you know, this is the inside, and, and right now we're doing a uh, preservation to uh, to restore because the corner's starting to fall fall down, and we're afraid that we're going to lose the building. Oh. And the diocese and the city have been involved. Oh, in. That's in there. Yeah. The um, the. Um, Yeah, the, uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, yeah it's, seminary it's, 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 or whatever. Yeah, okay. Yeah. It, it's a this is a 1912 building, and it's very Spanish colonial style. It was um, it, it was yeah the seminary that was uh, and you could see the the lot of the brickwork and masses uh, in the back part of it. But what was really interesting about this is about half a mile south of there, you, you can the brick kiln, the brick kiln still exists. Oh it's on right on the road going to Antaldoas. It's on a, it's right next to Actually, the property owner, the person who lived right next door, her father built the church or the or this uh, seminary, and she. Uh, this is his daughter that lives there, and uh, uh, he was a German immigrant. And when a lot of people were moving into the area, very poor, and uh, took on the, the again the brick making business. I had a lot of help from the locals because they already knew how to build it. They just they just made enough brick to to do that structure. And then, and of course, move down to Mission, where you have La Guadalupe. By the way, this was this was done by his early Spanish architect, you know, which which you had. No, of course. what is that? And the reason I want to show you this is because a lot of times when we talk about this building, we talk about its champion coins, you know, and that, that everybody. But you know, almost every little commerce throughout from here all the way down the river it had their own. You know, the coin and then in the turn of the century, and we 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 find a lot of those. I have a nice collection of those, and one of them that we came across is it with W. S. Doherty, 1902, Jardin de Flores. And everybody, where the heck is Jardin de Flores? Nobody knew, so we started investigating. Where's this Jardin de Flores? Went to the museum, went to the archives. Finally, came across this building. It's right on the oh. river where our mission is. This was built. This building was built, and then we did a complete, you know, uh, uh, investigation of the building, drew the plans, and everything else. It was an 1890 building, 
It was a Doherty. He was a he was a treasurer in Cameron County. Moved to the missionary, bought the land, irrigated. This was before Mission. Mission at that time had had a, a little depot and didn't even have a post office. They had a post office. They had a store and everything else. Okay. And Dor and Doherty, Mrs. Doherty, uh, eventually this was her summer little ranch. I mean, a river home, and she would she moved into Mission and became a prominent person. There's not even a historical marker of the building, by the way. Oh. On this? Oh, that's oh, that's and I mean, it's embarrassing to the Bible because I brought it to their attention. And uh, this is the way, the, this is the building right here, look back um, in the day. It where is, is it? It's, 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 you know where La Lomita is? Uh -huh. And you go off the levee to the right, uh -huh. going towards the uh, Benson Park. Uh -huh. It's right below the levee on the mm -hmm. river. Uh -huh. and, uh, and this is the way the building was. Uh, they had the jardin de flor because she used to grow the most beautiful and most beautiful garden there. And uh, now, everything was pretty much the same way until the border service. World War One, before World War One, you had soldiers up and down, and there was an influx of immigrants coming in. In this case, uh, this hotel was built in in, uh, in 1917, really to accommodate a lot of the, the people to come and visit the soldiers that were stationed in the area. So about that time, in, well actually in 1890 there was an architecture being introduced by the railroad, was called Mission Style Architecture, which was really the architecture of California. Keep in mind California was the last mission to be colonized in. And then, then the one before that was Arizona, New Mexico, and the first one was Texas. The San Antonio missions were colonized much way in the, 17, in the 1720s and 30s, whereas the California mission was 1780s, but then the architecture revival started with the California Mission, with a very smooth type of white architecture. And then when you when you see that architecture, all of a sudden we start copying that Alamo shape that was really put on the Alamo after, you know, uh, it was uh, after the the Alamo, uh, the, uh, the Battle of the Alamo. So so you had this architect, including the architecture here in the Yacht Club. You can see a little Alamo shape, which was very popular. It was almost a Mediterranean, but still it had a Spanish colonial. Uh, er, this was prior to the to World War One. Then, and, and another beautiful example is is the church there in Brownsville. It's, it was done by an architect out of Colorado, and uh, as a matter of fact, there was three churches built at that time. There was the church, the the Catholic, the Sacred Heart, the Presbyterian. Well, this is the Presbyterian, isn't it? Yeah, that's huh? no. Episcopal. Episcopal. Yeah, I was going to say. Okay, Episcopal. the Presbyterian's the other one. Well, they're all built at the same time. It, it was a, they, they wanted to make it a French Gothic style, and they said, no, let's do it Spanish. They did it the style, and, 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 and so what you had coming out of that, that building. Well, the railroads come after the War I, and then the railroads started, mm -hmm. Missouri Pacific started coming in, and they wanted to attract people on their trains and bring in this real, you know, tropical look, so they built this one in Edinburgh, and they built this one in, uh, in McAllen, and they built this one in Brownsville. This is, this is 1928, and this is this is what they call Spanish colonial revival. Okay, the other one was mission style. This is Spanish colonial, which really wasn't really Spanish colonial because it went it went back to the original roots. It went back to to a Moorish flavor where Mexico didn't have. It went more to what they call a mudahar type of effect, and you can see in the Westlake, you know, city hall, which has all that tile, but there's nothing that exists like really like that. In, in Mexico, only you find more of that is a Moorish influence in the Spanish areas, and uh, and it's as ironic that Brownsville has so many old buildings, and the building is really known for is the 1928 building. <laughs> and some of the some of them didn't make it, you know, like this is in the Westlake. They've been they've been you don't see it anymore. And to end the presentation. <laughs> I <laughs> I also, what I, I told Ed, I said, you know, I have a video that I did, and while you, I, and you know, I, I guess while you, like Ed's going to say, when you get a refreshment, we're going to play it at the other place. And the, this is architecture that we're doing right now, and it's just, it's a, it's a VHS, and it's, it, it's bumpy because I didn't use a tripod and it has everything else, but it shows some of the architecture from here all the way to, to Roma again. You're welcome right. to see that at the other location. Okay. Right.
Well, thank you. They're patriotic. Why not? Well, they're already here. Yeah. So, you know, first of all, I'm they, they, have they, they the plane. Oh, oh first I can't. Balancing a cane. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm fine. I really don't have a green. It's going to be a good thing. 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 Where are you going? Was it ice cream? Yeah. Where are you going? I run the valley work. And this is all an example of the work that we're doing here in the valley. We've got, you know, we've got about 70 employees, so we're a big firm. Uh, you're going to see the work in the valley. We, we do large work. We've done the Santa Monica Convention Center. We just finished the Spurs Arena. We've done just the Texas Sea World. There's a lot of little university work. But this is just an example of some of the work in the area. And this was done for the Fresno School District, by the way. And I, and I did it. We put it, I did a series of films, so I didn't use a tripod, and we put it together in the night, so we used a little program, and so you can see it bounces a little bit, and, and uh, I wish I had more time to do it, but anyway, I thought it would be interesting to show right now. projects at UTB, these are the three projects that we're Oh, that's yours. Yeah, it looks like it was built back then. Yeah, it's wonderful. Uh, and we, we've it's taken gorgeous. a flavor of the yeah. Fort Brown yeah. that, uh, that's uh, Samuel uh, Brown architecture and try to make it feel more like uh, the scale of a steward than rather than Oh, I've seen that. That's a 
Oh, so. well, that was the glass block from San Miguel. Yeah. 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 Matter of fact, Ed and I went to San Miguel de Allende to get that glass. Oh, you did? Yeah. All the way from and it was this hand-blown glass. Ah. It, it, you know, it, it doesn't. It, it, it has a real nice tint to it. It looks like you're in water or something. <laughs> I'm always in that water. <laughs> you know, and they had the 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 uh, hut developments right next to it, and they said. We want you to make Spanish colonial style. Well, how do you do a 40-foot building Spanish colonial? <laughs> I mean, you know, Spanish colonial was real low scale. Shape it as a whole thing. Yeah. It was a six million dollar project. So. based on a con design, which is which And in the science building, what, what we try to do is, we, we try to do the planetarium. So, see that's the Earth, and then Mars, and Moon, so that's Mars oh, red. So we try to, different components of the building, give it the, including the landscaping. I know, right, the house is right there. <laughs> That's red tile? That's all red tile. They had a heck of a tile with that. Wow. It's crack tile. It's actually a, an Italian crack tile. Oh, gosh. That's expensive. It is. And if you go on the inside, it's yellow light. It looks like you're in the sun. It's, it's, it got, you know, it's really neat effect. Because what do you do to the one in lamb around? I'm sorry? What do you do to the one in lamb around? Uh, it, it'll show up here. It's fine arts. Open a little bit. Like a guitar. Yeah. Again, the, the, we wanted to incorporate a more of a mission look to, you know, how do you do that with a with a high school? Built now, and that's what it looks like. I gotta go paint an eagle on that front part now. Oh, <laughs> oh, no. oh, oh, oh. That's part of the deal. Wonderful, said, though. We'll let you design if you paint an eagle on that. And I said, oh. okay. Yeah. <laughs> Just like you was a buffalo. Yeah. Had not uh, had not done any work in the valley until the last five years. It's incredible. Under construction right now, so I don't, I don't get it's like, like metal sure the, sheets that are. Are they, are they pounded on or something? I mean, oh, they're punched. Punch. Oh, they're punched. This one is built right now in Westlaco. There's actually three schools, uh, uh, and a Kate building and technology. They're all in the same area. They all look like like that. What's interesting about this, if, you, if you're familiar with the Westlaco industrial area, okay, this was an old Texas building. They said, okay, make a college campus out of it. You know, what do you do with this? How do you make that? <laughs> 
Look at that. Oh, that's too rippy. Oh, my goodness. Can you comment on this? 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 You like these challenges, don't you? Yeah, they're, especially with with uh, with a group like like this is real open minded about it. And That's why you're never at home. <laughs> it's it's, it's just real rough. the same way you have with the yellow yeah. car. Did you put this on Fort Ringgold or is it west, west of the city? This is on the right between Rome and Rio Grande City by the airport. By the airport. Touches the roof around it. Wow. Mexico is it? Oh, that's the Museum of Anthropology. You know, the waterfall. The column. Yeah, that feature again. You, you, well, you don't copy it exactly, but that's that's a uh, Spanish colonial feature. We had the twisted column. Oh, it's yeah. a lot of stones you were talking about. This is the one we're talking about. That's a, that's a, I went to Mexico looking for the lava stone. Finally, I found it in a, up in the mountains where they made the, and we put three traders full of lava stone on the building. Oh. It's all mocha. There's even mocha. I hit the stuck in there because they had a. That's beautiful. Yeah, it's It's a cantera. It's a cantera. Oh, it's really a it's a cantera. They make mocha. That's all they did. That's all they did. This one shaped like a guitar. <laughs> this is strictly for mariachis. Yeah, this, this is a this is a nine million dollar auditorium just for mariachis. <laughs> <laughs> Seats fifteen hundred people. Wow. Uh, the acoustical engineer was out of New York uh, by the name of Khan. And it just has it has a sound like, you know if they have you need to go hear the mariachis here. They'll have performances during the winter for the Winter Texans. You gotta go hear them. The, the student is the best, the best in La Jolla. The carpet was made. It's the best. Uh, this carpet right here is made in Taiwan. I have it in my in my house too. <laughs> I can't believe it. Ordered a little more. Well, they don't make it anymore. They broke the bowl. I was out of La Jolla. Might have something like that. Your money. This is Ed Couch also. And, uh, and we're going to do a stanza, and it's going to be a story of, of the music of that area, a yes. mural. Oh, was that the one that yeah. was yeah. talking about? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there's, there's a, we, we've done a lot more since then, so there's others to add. It'll be nice to tour. We take a How about that? If you would like it, because it's very, very different, very unique. All right, that's what we, we try to bring in some of the border style into it. Same thing I'm talking about, the evolution of architecture. Whereas it hasn't really been done. This one won a design award on this so. It's all punch metal. We got all yeah, the punch metal from San yeah. Miguel de Allende, too. Oh, oh, everything is... Oh, oh, I've gone all over Mexico. I'm looking for brick or whatever. When I want to use something, uh, and we incorporate that into it. That's it. 